This chef was so arrogant that he single-handedly destroyed this restaurant. BJ Steakhouse. Yeah, pathetic joke. That's what it stands for. Well, let's meet Mr. Too Cool for School, aka Chef Eric Jones, the snobby head chef who had a major attitude problem. And of course, he didn't give a damn about the restaurant or even the owner's struggles. I'm a natural. People love my food. They rave about me. Oh yeah, natural my ass. Not surprising that he got fired even before Chef Ramsay left. Either way, the dude did so much damage at PJ Steakhouse, which was later rebranded as PJ's Grill in Forest Hills, New York, that the restaurant can never rise from the ashes. Although Eric has been MIA ever since, I've got the latest scoop from the few breadcrumbs he left behind. For one, I found him on Instagram. But before I start dissecting that, you have to hear what led up to him getting fired on the show. When Joe and Madeline first started their restaurants, they never expected that things would take such a bad turn. Joe had history in the construction world before taking a seemingly random turn into the culinary world. So here's the question of the century. Why on earth did they go from hard hats to chef hats? Turns out Joe was super close with his brother PJ, but when PJ passed away, it hit Joe real hard. I started working in construction, worked with my brother PJ. PJ and I were very, very close. And believe me, the details surrounding his brother's passing are as gruesome as they get. I'll be getting to that a little later, but Joe wanted to do something to keep his brother's memory alive. He really and truly taught me about life and be my own man. Yeah, that bond was something special. I can't mention his name without feeling that hurt inside, you know? But time never seemed to heal the broken wounds. And so, the couple decided to open a restaurant in PJ's memory. Now, we're about just caught back up. PJ's opened, and the couple unknowingly set the events of this episode into motion. I said go and get the key, and we'll, we'll just name it after PJ. Now, to make their dream come true, both Joe and Madeline went all in, dropping a whopping $2 million to make their restaurant happen. But here's the twist. Their lack of experience meant that they were more or less cool with whatever the head chef decided to dish out. They delegated pretty much all the responsibility onto him and defended him come hell or high water. However, there was a major problem. They put their faith in the worst person they could have. I'm a very good chef. People come here just for me. But before I dig into the specific flavor of waffle that Chef Eric Jones was known for, why don't you take a moment to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications so you don't miss future videos like this one. And if you're looking to have a hand in the production process, head over to my channel's Discord server for free. If you've got an idea for a cool video, that's the place you'd want to share with me. Plus, believe me, unlike these owners, I'll definitely consider your opinion. Speaking of the owners, despite the mounting complaints, they decide to diss their customers instead of addressing the real issue back in the kitchen. Red meat is red meat. I don't know what you would expect. Yeah, Madeline tried her best to save face, but never bothered to question their head chef. As for Joe? Joe sit and drink glasses of wine, watch television when there is a million things going wrong here. Oh yeah, he was the master of multitasking, juggling TV time and having drinks at the bar instead of, you know, doing his job. Anyway, with this clown steering the ship, money trouble started knocking on their door in no time flat. And the owners were in desperate need of some help. Well, that was everything that led up to Chef Ramsay showing up at the steakhouse. But once he arrived, he realized the issues extended way beyond the kitchen. It started at the front desk. Anybody here? Oh my goodness me. No one at the front desk. Yup, there wasn't a single soul to welcome him or any customers that happened to walk in. And from that moment on, he realized these guys needed his help way more than he'd bargained for. So he walked around the bar looking for anyone he could strike up a conversation with. Maybe, and I mean maybe if he was lucky, he'd find, you know, someone who worked there. And well, he was about to find out exactly how clueless everyone here was. A customer or Mr. Ramsey? No, I'm the owner. You're the owner? Yup, that's pretty much what Joe did all day long. Hung around the bar, sipping on a drink or two, lost in his own little world. Chef Ramsey didn't get the greatest of vibes from Joe as the owner, but he was yet to meet the real star of the show, the head chef. And in his very first meeting, Chef Ramsey realized that nobody had an ounce of passion for the business. Sit back and have a couple of wines at the bar. I wish opening restaurants were that easy, Joe. <laughs> yeah, right? It can put you in a hole real fast at a restaurant. Forget about passion. Eric was overflowing with pride, and it was evident as soon as he met Chef Ramsay. We're here to get a job done, and if he can help us, great. If he can't, then go himself. Now, Eric was pretty confident that the famous chef wouldn't find anything wrong with his food. Add him to the list of millions of others who thought the same. Yeah, I want to cook him a great meal. I'm going to let him find other problems in the restaurant besides mine because I don't think mine's a problem. 
But there had to be a reason why the restaurant was heading down the drain, and Ramsey was about to find out real soon. When he sat down for the tasting, Chef Ramsey was in for a shock. PJ Steakhouse, a restaurant with steakhouse in the name, only had two steak cuts. It's like going to a pizzeria only to find out that they only do pineapple pizza and then like 500 kinds of calzones. If you call yourself a steakhouse, you gotta feature the classics like the porterhouse, New York strip, you know, actual steak cuts. But PJ's didn't even come close. Two steaks on the menu in a steakhouse. It should be minimum eight to 10. Given that the owners had absolutely no idea how to run a restaurant, Chef Ramsey kind of figured who was behind the menu. But still, he wanted a taste. At first, he went for the gold, crab cakes, roasted garlic ravioli, and the star of the show, filet mignon. But even before sending out the first dish to Chef Ramsey, Eric was gloating about himself. My food is good, and if he critiques it like I seen him critique other people's food, I'm gonna probably throw it at him. Damn, that's gotta be the single most premature celebration I've ever seen. Because when the crab cakes hit the table, Chef Ramsey's face said it all. What is that on there? That's coolie mango sauce. Oh, coolie mango. Well, he wasn't impressed with the presentation. And the taste? Wow, that's disgusting. Not much better. But wait, hold on, things were about to get much worse. Is everything okay? Uh, yeah, the chef sent out a little surprise. I got bits of plastic running through there. Uh-huh, so it looks like Chef Eric was trying to send some sort of message to Chef Ramsey. However, the famous chef decided to give him the benefit of the doubt, but finding plastic in your food? There's no excuse for that. And when Joe went back to the kitchen with Chef Ramsey's complaint, Eric decided to play dumb. I have no idea where that plastic came from. I don't even have plastic in my kitchen. Okay, now before you take him at his word, check this out. Almost everything in the kitchen was wrapped in plastic, and the dude was talking like he'd never seen plastic before in his entire life. Like, literally read the room, bro. Anyway, let's hit the table for the star of the show, the steak. It has to be good, right? It's a steakhouse. Quite tough. Are they always served with raw onions or? Yeah, nah. Yeah, so imagine being so bad at your job that somehow you made a filet of all things that tough. And then piled raw onions on top? But you have to see Eric's reaction when Colin delivered Chef Ramsay's feedback. There's nothing positive being said. I don't really suck that bad. Whatever, dude. And when it was time for the ravioli, it was a whole different experience. Like the biggest pile of ever to be served in Queens. Straight up disgusting. He even said how it tasted like there was a buzz in his mouth. Was Eric sticking pop rocks in his raviolis or what? Safe to say, by this point, Chef Ramsay knew exactly why the place was deserted despite the bustling foot traffic outside. It was none other than head chef Eric Jones himself. And viewers caught on just about as quick. In fact, some viewers felt that Eric probably never wanted the restaurant to do well at all. His attitude was almost like he was hell-bent on destroying the place, and I'm far from alone in that line of thinking. That chef didn't want to be there. I bet he wasn't getting paid enough, which is why the owners kept him for so long. And when they got their new chef, they closed the doors because they didn't want to continue paying the new chef their new salary. Eric seems that he wants the restaurant to fail. Yeah, not hard to agree with these opinions because he showed absolutely no signs of taking charge despite having 100% trust from the owners. By the way, people also slammed Joe and Madeline for not standing up for themselves. It was their restaurant after all, and they could have easily replaced the chef if they had wanted to. People who have never worked at a restaurant should not open a restaurant. I doubt these people have ever even eaten at a restaurant. Always surprises me when the owners say that they didn't know the food was bad. Don't they ever eat at their own restaurant? But I guess they just wanted to take the easy route and just blame it all on someone else, right? In truth, when the restaurant actually collapsed, they were equally responsible for it, if not more. Anyway, Chef Ramsay set out to do the one thing the owner should have done a long time ago, confronting the head chef. However, little did Chef Ramsay know he was dealing with this absolute gem of a person. I get a lot of compliments, man. A lot. A lot of compliments from where? The place is empty. Compliments? Wait, this restaurant was practically a ghost town. So where exactly are these compliments from? I really thought that Eric's food was a lot better than Chef Ramsay said it was. Maybe he's got some ghosts living in his walls, who knows? Seriously though, I don't think Joe has ever tasted the food at his restaurant because there's no way he'd say this if he knew what he was talking about. And then Chef Ramsay had to ask, who actually ran the place? And guess who took the credit for the same? Yup, the head chef. For the most part I am. He's not here every day. I'm not here enough to mother him, but I am here.
Well, it really doesn't matter how many hours you spend at the restaurant if you don't know how to run it. And this place was far from the only time Kitchen Nightmares has seen some really clueless owners. Any in particular come to mind? Make sure to drop those names in the comments section down below. As for PJs, Madeline also blamed Joe for not taking any responsibility and wasting his time at the bar all day. You're here really overseeing everything and standing here and doing every single night. It was a chaotic scene as the blame game unfolded, revealing the underlying issues that Chef Ramsay needed to bring heel in order to save PJ's steakhouse from disaster. And to bring the place to heel, he did. Despite the numerous problems plaguing the restaurant, the owners deflected any responsibility for the awful situation. If there's one thing that has to change, it's people's attitude around here. Now, in the meantime, all eyes were on Eric. Eric is a nut. He strikes me as an unstable person the way he carries himself. Yeah, so people started to question his integrity and wondered if he had any underlying behavioral issues. And well, there are way more people asking these kind of questions than I can really highlight in one video alone. Why does every Eric I know have behavioral issues? I say this as a person with behavioral issues myself. Meanwhile, back in the kitchen, things hit a boiling point, prompting Chef Ramsay to make a dramatic exit, leaving the restaurant hanging in the balance. After the dust settled, Chef Ramsay and Madeline had a heart-to-heart -heart that night, delving into the tragic loss of Joe's brother and the dire state of the restaurant. And that's when Madeline dropped a financial bombshell. And how much did he spend? 1.2 million to build it. Crazy, right? PJ's Steakhouse was barely scraping by, pulling in a mere $4,000 weekly when it needed at least $17,000 to keep the doors open. What's more? The sacrifices were real. They had to part with their dream home, which they had built with their own two hands just to keep the place afloat. As much as it has cost us to, to keep this place open, it gave us back Joe. We just can't let it go. You can't say that the owners didn't have heart, that's for sure. Now, armed with insight into Joe's world, Chef Ramsay observed a typical dinner service at PJ's Steakhouse. But as the orders started coming in, the head chef basically forgot how to communicate, making the staff super confused about the orders. He literally doesn't talk behind the line. He doesn't communicate with me. The worst situation in the world. Chaos ensued, and it got to the point where hungry customers were enduring an astronomical wait time for their meals. Even Chef Ramsay got super confused and asked Madeline if this was normal. It usually takes two hours to eat here. Yeah. From two hours. Two hours from start to finish. Yeah, so a two hour wait at PJ's was part of the experience. I don't even know what to say. Anyway, Chef Ramsay being there forced Eric to hustle. And finally, one hour into the dinner service, food started leaving the kitchen. Well, he brought the wait time down, but that wasn't the only thing that took a hit. That's really gross. You don't like it? The struggle in the kitchen was real, and the customers were the ones who had to shoulder the burden. And to top it all off, the one person with the most responsibility at PJ's was giving up. Come on! No, I can't. It's too much for me. No. Someone commented that they had a lot of respect for the servers that were still there. They are absolutely right that it's tough working for a chef that doesn't care and checked out owners. Either way, with the dining room crumbling, Chef Ramsay figured he'd seen enough and decided to check out the storage room. And guess what he found? Ugh, stuck to the cardboard box. Ugh. Rotten fruits and vegetables. No wonder the locals had a bad impression about the place. Whoa, cold, not too good, wouldn't go back. This is incredible. But did it bother Eric in any way? Everything was pretty horrible. Pretty horrible. Yeah. If you had the chance to change, what would it be? Better food. Better food. Absolutely not. And that's when something crazy happened. It's total I wanted to turn around and smack Eric in the mouth. Oh yeah, this guy deserved a good schooling. However, the only thing that he had to say in his defense was this. I was disgusted with the little movie thing we just saw. I don't believe it's all that true. It's not that bad. Either way, Chef Ramsay was disgusted by his attitude. In an embarrassing situation, there's definitely nothing to laugh about, Eric. What's hard to believe? That the food sucked or that the reviews were faked? I don't know, if it smells like crap everywhere you go, maybe check under your shoe first. As for the restaurant, Chef Ramsay immediately ordered the staff to toss everything out and deep clean the hell out of the place. But the clash between the famous chef and the head chef really made this rescue story stand out from the rest. It felt like there was hardly anything to root for most of the time, and it was all thanks to Eric. One viewer commented, Dang, PJ Grill was a beautiful restaurant. One bad chef brought the owner's vision down completely. That's why you can't be relying on anyone to do your business or handle it like you can. You have to be on top of it, making sure that everything is done the right way. 
Never trust someone else to treat your business like it's their own. Returning for another dinner service, Chef Ramsay introduced special dishes like a mixed grill platter. Amazing thighs of chicken, tomato, roasted, lamb sausage, a little mini slider, beautifully done on a broiler, sauteed mushrooms, fries, and onion rings. And then he placed Madeline in charge and cautioned Joe to steer clear of the bar. However, the first specialty dish was sent back for being way too cold. This is cold and this is cold. Alright, I'm sorry about that. And believe me, the long night had just begun. How is everything? I mean, that's terrible. I'm sorry. It's freezing cold. At this point, I seriously got to wondering if Eric was really a chef. Because the dishes started returning to the kitchen in record time. He hates it. Oh, come on. This is getting worse than last night. Suddenly, frustration peaked and Eric reached his limit. He abandoned his kitchen and the service midway and simply walked out. Stop it. Close the door. Close the door. One viewer was so disgusted that they actually thought Eric wouldn't even hack it as a prison cook. And well, you're not wrong, Kato. Now, let's not forget that Chef Ramsay has actually worked with Chef behind bars, and he definitely came across better cooks there. As for PJs, the night was a disaster, and the kitchen was shut down for the night. But it allowed Chef Ramsay some time to initiate a makeover, adorning the interior with family photos of Joe and his late brother PJ. Honoring PJ's memory took center stage, complemented by the introduction of an Irish stew to the menu. Chef Ramsay also brought in a new chef, Mark, and a general manager, Edna. To seal the deal, he rebranded the establishment as PJ's Grill, a fitting shift considering its limited steak-centric offerings. However, despite all the improvements, the restaurant closed its doors in May of 2010, barely a minute after the camera stopped rolling. But here's an interesting part. As of now, in 2023, the location is now taken over by a place called Manor Oktoberfest. And guess what? This new joint is rocking a cool 4-star rating on Yelp. Looks like a change in, well, everything did wonders. Now here comes the main question. Why did PJ Steakhouse close? So, PJ Steakhouse faced closure primarily due to its overwhelming debt. Despite Chef Ramsay's intervention, the restaurant had accumulated significant financial losses, making it a hell of a challenging rescue effort. Following its closure, the owners opted to return to their previous careers in the construction industry. Going back to what you know seems like a pretty smart choice to me. As for our main man Eric, some viewers think that he acted like a snob because the owners never paid him properly. The dude was probably just hanging around until he landed another job. What's more, like I mentioned earlier, I found his Instagram page with 17 followers or so. But here's the catch, it's a fan page that reads, Born and raised in the middle of nowhere, former chef at PJ Steakhouse, but I got fired because my cooking is garbage. Kitchen Nightmares PJ Steakhouse Okay, so on a more serious note, I found this comment on more than one update that says Eric brought his own life to an end after the show. Eric hung himself a few months after, closed the doors, and Eric committed suicide. Now, I can't vouch for these comments because I don't know Eric personally, but it might be true because the dude has practically gone MIA after the episode aired. But for better or for worse, he's definitely a character that's hard to forget. So, can you think of more times when restaurants succumb to the head chef's bad decisions? Make sure to let me know in the comments section down below. And don't forget to check out my latest video right here since it's even crazier.